Hi, my name is Wendy Hansen. I live in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I have a disease called CIDP, chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuritis. To shorten that in layman's terms and make it easier to understand is I have an antibody in my spinal fluid that eats the sheath off of my nerves and leaves them raw and exposed. So it's very, very painful um, and causes a numbing, um, almost like a neuropathy. I'm sure that you've heard of many people that have neuropathy, but the key to this disease is that it starts at the toes and works up and starts at the hands and works up. It, it's unilateral. With MS, you have like one leg sometimes that'll go out on you for a while and then you'll go back into remission and you know have everything working. Um, this, once the damage is done, the damage is done. There is no cure, there is treatment. I received treatment for several years with IVIG until it got to the point where it was no longer effective and very expensive and my insurance wasn't paying so we opted to back out of that because it was causing more harm to me than good. Um, my day consists of I sleep in late, mornings are not so good for me, um, the hospice aide comes in and gives me a shower and then I'm up for the rest of the day. Mm. Well, often I nap in the afternoon but up and down, up and down for the rest of the day. I cannot walk, um, I cannot write, my hands can no longer hold a pen. I was a nurse for 30 years and retired two years ago and went on hospice because I realized my disease was progressing to the point where I could no longer safely take care of patients. Um, even though I wasn't in a direct care patient situation, I knew that it was time. I'd, I'd have to pull the monitor the computer like this close to see it because my optic nerves have been affected by the disease and rendered me nearly blind. I read for one of my escapes and to get out of pain but luckily I have an e-reader that lets me make the font like this big so there's like four words on a page but who cares. I can still read and that is a comfort for me and it lets me escape and go someplace else and get myself out of pain. Pain is probably the biggest thing that I deal with on a day in and day out of basis. I take scheduled pain medications and as long as I stick to that schedule I do relatively well. Um, I also take other medications that help keep the inflammation and the, the pain controllable. I, I can't get myself completely out of pain and be coherent. So I do as much as I can and kind of get to the edge of that and then I just have my days. So this last year I wrote a book. Um, it was kind of my last wish on my bucket list that I wanted to do and I used um, Dragon Speak and was able to get my book finished. And one of my experiences as a nurse was I lived in the Middle East for three years. And so I wrote about my time there as a nurse and how the people took such great care of me. And um, I got married and had a baby. And a year after she was born, my symptoms started showing up. So I've had symptoms of this disease for 23 years. I have been put through the ringer with medical testing. They did bone marrow, they've done lumbar punctures, they've done everything they can um, until I finally pulled myself out of the medical world and um, started doing my own research, started doing my own homework basically. I would go up to the University, uh, University of Utah Medical Library, I would look online and one night when I couldn't sleep, because sleep is hard to come by because the, the pain is seems to be the worst at night. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm all quiet and still and so everything just kind of hits at once at night. But I was up one night and found CIDP on the computer and then I looked up a physician and Salt Lake City actually has a doctor that treats this disease. There are few of them that do but I took all of my labs and my medical testing and everything to him and he and his PA kind of laid it out on the examination table, looked at it, um, 
did the EMG, the, the conduction study for my nerves in my legs and said, yes, you do have CIDP, one of the worst cases that we've ever seen. And so, like I said, there for a while we treated me with IVIG. It is not curable. It does, it just, it does not have a cure. It has a treatment and I have lots of palliative care. I have hospice that comes in and then I have this great, I call them my posse, but um, group of friends that have days of the week, every day of the week that they come in and stay with me and help me. I'm no longer able to cook because I burn myself because I can't feel. Um, I need assistance with eating, drinking, going to the bathroom, everything. My hands are not able to hold, and especially if it's a round object, hold anything safely without it spilling or dropping. So um, I have to have assistance with that. I try to do as much as for myself as possible. I transfer from the bed to, to my jazzy and jazzy back to bed. Um, I want to keep as much of myself going as I can, as long as I can. But it's been, it, it, this last year has been a drastic decline and change in my condition. But for a disease where you're only supposed to live around eight years and I've had 23, I feel blessed. Um, it's, it is getting tougher and tougher to live. It is. And that's why I feel like it's so important for me to take this moment and this time to educate YouTube viewers and people around the world about this disease because when I when I tell people what I have they look at me like I have four heads and it is very important to me to leave a legacy of education about what I've been through and how it's affected the people closest to me my partner's my full-time caregiver she goes to school during the day and that's why I have people that come in during the day and then she's here night and evening and my daughter as well, but she is a school teacher and in another state, so it's difficult for her to get here. So I have, the when people found out I went on hospice, they came, folks came out of the woodwork to help me. And I daily continue to feel blessed by that. Um, I, yeah, I, like I said, I worked as a nurse for 30 years in the community and around the world and many of those people that I've worked with have now come back to help me and it is a huge gift, huge gift for them to give so freely of themselves. Um, I'm on social security disability so financially very limited in what I can do and, and how I can do it but we get things done. So um, I have, currently I have um, osteomyelitis in these two fingers because I was driving my jazzy through a door you know a door frame and hit the door frame with my fingers and broke them and didn't know till it surfaced and so being treated for that right now I don't heal well it takes a long time for wounds of any sort to heal and resolve um, requiring antibiotics and so and appetite's an issue. I don't have a great appetite. I have to kind of be pushed and nudged to eat. And then I eat a little. Um, but it's, appetite is not my, it, it just, I'm not hungry these days. And I don't know if you can see, but down here, this, my left ankle has been in that boot on and off for the last 10 years to the point where the ankle is about this big around and won't hold me now unless I have the boot on. And I'm dealing with a pressure ulcer on the ankle bone at this point. Um, it's healing, it's resolving. I have to eat a lot of protein and I'm, I don't love meat so that's hard. I've had to find alternative ways to get my protein in me so I can heal. And um, have been creative with that but have found some things that I really really like so that works and obviously it's working because I'm healing it just is slow 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 but it works so my day consists of a lot of 
one, two, threes, and up I go, and one, two, threes, and over I go, and counting, and, and moving me, and helping me to have the best life that I can have. Um, basically, I have this much space that I can feel my diaphragm is shrinking, and at, when the time comes, I will die of a sort of Guillain Barre type syndrome where my diaphragm just doesn't work and I don't breathe anymore. Um, I've had several little mini heart attacks over this last year and get through them. I mean, I, I wake up and I'm still here. So my body doesn't respond the way your body would, a normal healthy body would. I get perky and a little jerky, I call it, sometimes, and I can't help it. And it's the nerves that are are being eaten and what that caused that. And there's nothing I can do but wait it out. So it's it's getting closer and closer for me to, to leave the planet. And it's very important for me that I leave a legacy. And so if you see this video and know of anyone that has these kind of symptoms, Again, it is numbness from the toes up and it works unilaterally and the fingers up and it works unilaterally. And if they're getting the run around and told, well, it looks like MS, but it's not really, have, have them talk to their physician about CIDP because it was a long time for me to get treatment and had I gotten treatment sooner, who knows how much longer I would be here. So take this moment and look at this video and think if there's anyone in your life that it could help and even for yourself. Um, CIDP is only only been diagnosed since the 1950s so it's relatively rare and people are not very knowledgeable about it and it's just because every, you say the word MS and everybody knows what that is. I always tell people this is MS on steroids. It's MS that's bigger and meaner and nastier. And um, I'm getting to the point where I'm basically a talking head. I'm on oxygen 24-7. That helps with the breathing. And so we do what we do to keep me comfortable. And that's all I can ask for. And it's, it's been an amazing journey. Um, I get to die with dignity. I get to die surrounded by people that love me. And there's not... A lot of people in the world that can say that for themselves but I have the greatest family and friends that make sure I'm okay and that I have what I need and they've had to learn and understand what this diagnosis is as well so I, I ask you to take it to your heart and look up CIDP on the computer if you just put in those initials you'll get lots of hits on it and it will give you obviously more in-depth information than I can. I'm, I just am giving you the personal information that impacts my life on a daily basis. So my whole life has been about living in peace and being understanding and being kind and this is just one more step in spreading that message is Take care of yourself, and if you have anything that sounds like this, please, please, please get some help. It's, it's never, ever too late, and you need it. I'm sure if you have anything similar to this, you're sitting there watching this in a, in a great deal of pain, and there's no reason for that. So take care of yourself, and peace out.